As you guys know, Botox to me is a very, very important treatment. And you've heard some of my videos in the past. You may have read some of my blogs. But I think some of the information is a bit scattered. What I'm going to do is in this short video is go through with you what the most important aspect of Botox is, which in my opinion is long-term gains. You got that right. It's long-term gains. A lot of people are very, very focused on the short-term gains. They look good for a party. There's no education. I find that patients have been elsewhere besides technical um, how should I put it, not the best results or the uh, uncomfortable experience. Beyond that, which is to me unacceptable, is also ha really having no education. So what we're going to talk about in this short video is what I like to call the Botox scale. It's something that's original. I've come up with my, this idea myself, and I want to explain to you what that means. Let's say you're at time point A right now, and you say, you know, my wrinkles aren't that bad. They're really not something that I'm even bothered by right now. I don't need Botox now, but I have some wrinkles. Picture this. In five years from now, they will get worse. There's no question that they're going to get worse in five years. How do I know that? Why don't you subtract five years ago? Five years ago, your wrinkles were much better. Now, let's take that same time point A and imagine that you start Botox. If you continue Botox over time, your wrinkles actually disappear over time. Don't believe me? Go to my website, take a look at some of what I call long-term photographs, the ones where the Botox had completely faded and the individual had come back for the next treatment, and the wrinkles are literally gone because the skin is healed. So I want you to understand, as we move forward in time with ongoing consistent Botox use, the wrinkles start to fade to the point that they're gone. And the longer you wait, the harder to, to manage them. Let's say another scenario. I see you here. You decide not to do Botox. You come back to me. Five years later, you're over here. I have now got to spend two years to fight to get back to your time point A. I can't bring you here for another two to three years. So the point is, you're sliding one way or the other. And to make it very simple for you to understand, you're either going to get worse without Botox or better with Botox. Now, a lot of people tell me, then, wait a second. Are you telling me I've got to keep doing this? I've got to keep doing this for the rest of my life. Well, let's put it this way. Do you have to exercise? Do you have to eat food? But here's the other thing that's important. If you're currently at this time point A, and I pull you all the way over to here over, let's say, two years of consecutive use, the point is, when I shut down all the wrinkles, let the collagen heal, let the skin heal, the wrinkles start disappearing, the texture start disappearing, you've got to fight to come all the way over here, back to where you are today. So you could move to Alaska, find a place where there's not a good injector, and you still look better than if you've never done anything. And you have to fight to get back to where you are today. So here's an example. I, I, did a, I spent about two years working on my um, hair transplant technician. And, and she just got pregnant, actually just delivered her baby uh, this week. And so for nine months, I couldn't deliver Botox for her. And what's so amazing is that because she was consistent with two years of Botox, she will be fine for probably a year or two. Now, she's also obviously quite desperate and wants a Botox uh, very soon. But the idea is that's what's helped her. I saw a lady that flew in from another city to do some Botox with me. Actually, she was here for another consultation. But I saw she was really habitually moving that, that area. And I realized that in a year from now, get worse. And she said she was planning to get pregnant, actually, in a year. Now, there's no clear evidence Botox would hurt a fetus or hurt a baby, but there's no reason to do it. I'm not the one to do the risk for you to take that risk to do it. But the point is, I said, in that case, because your lines are getting so deep in that one area, we need to do this now so that over the long run, when you become pregnant a year from now and you're off Botox, this, those lines won't get worse. So just think of that in a short summary, is that if you're currently time point A, if you don't do Botox, every year that goes by, you'll get worse. Every year that you do Botox, you'll get better. Now, that's obvious for someone that's with early signs of aging, maybe some sun exposure, early 30s, maybe 40s. Depends how fair skinned you are. But those are some concepts I want you to understand. So start thinking about Botox in the long run. And we'll do some more videos in terms of this series of really thinking Botox in the long term.